Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request, this time from my good friend Mike, OCP Communications. Thank you so much for that, my friend. And for those interested in requesting any type of reviews or topics, reactions, commentaries, video game stuff, reactions to trailers, whatever the case may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. Now this is for a review of the 1995 film Tank Girl, starring Lori Petty, who I've always liked. Liked her in the Polly Shore film In the Army now, I've liked her in other stuff. She stars as the title character, and this is based on a comic book that I never read, although I've heard that has definitely a quirky charm to it, which I think this does have a goofy charm. I think that's part of its appeal of why it's got a cult following. I can see why it bombed when it came out, but at the same time, I still think it's an overall fun movie. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites or anything, which I'll get to in a minute, but apparently at first there's going to be a lady named Emily Lloyd who's going to be the lead, but either A, she didn't want to shave her head, or B, she had creative differences with the director, Rachel Talele. Depending on who you ask, it's different stories. But yeah, I thought Lori Petty did a rather good job. If you're not a fan of Lori Petty, I doubt this will change your mind. <coughs> but I liked her. <coughs> Sorry. I always remember the story that she was actually cast in the Sandra Bullock part in Demolition Man. But then I don't know if it was arguments with Joel Silver or someone else. And she got pretty much fired. That'd be nice to see that footage because apparently some footage was shot... Maybe like a week or so, but I don't know if it's days or a week now that I think about it. But apparently some was shot, but they say we'd love to have, uh... Actually, I don't know the story now that I think about it. I just know she was cast with Demolition I don't know how much they had shot. A day, a week, I don't know. But if anything was shot, like I said, I'd be curious to see that footage. And this kind of... Tanked her career, no pun intended. I mean, she's done direct video stuff, sure, and TV work, but before this, again, she was casting Demolition Man, but her getting fired from that probably didn't help in Hollywood, because Joel Silver was a big producer, at least at that time. And you get fired from a Sylvester Stallone film, doesn't look good on your resume. And then, but you had Point Break, A League of Their Own, among other stuff, and then you get to be the star of this, not big budget, but it was a theatrical release, it was, I believe, a summer picture, and then it just, not only did it flop, but it was completely lambasted by critics, and there weren't really a lot of fans of Tank Girl at the time. Now the film has Malcolm McDowell from A Clockwork Orange as your main villain, you have Ice-T, who not only has a son in the film, but he plays one of the Tained Rue men known as the Rippers. That was part of this experiment. Uh, another one is Jeff Kober, who is the main villain in a film I love called The First Power, Lou Diamond Phillips. You also have Naomi Watts, many, many years before she did stuff like the remake of The Ring, among many other movies. Very young Naomi Watts. At least it's directed by Rachel Talalay. What? was probably the wrong choice to direct this film. Now, she's did, she did Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, where I actually don't mind the film. I actually like it. Yes, it does have flaws, but I like it for what it is. She did Ghost in the Machine with Karen Allen, which I like it for what it is. But she's not a fantastic, stupendous director. I do think she was well over her head for this type of project. I think if you had a much stronger action director, whether it be a Catherine Bigelow, or hell, Reddy Harlan, or some type of director like that, I think it really could have, I don't know if it would have improved the box office, but it would have improved the, like, the action sequences I thought was fairly lacking in this. Like the whole finale when the Rippers are fighting the bad guys, it's not the most exciting action compared to a lot of films of that era. 1995, I mean, the year before, you had Speed, you had True Lies. 
trying to think what Atchis fills were in 95. I'd have to look it up because I'm bad with years, but compared to a lot of films of that era, you know, Time Cop, Hard Tardy, Cliffhanger, Demolition Man, this action doesn't really stack up compared to those. But I said, what makes it work is I didn't mind the cast, in particular Lori Petty, Naomi Watts. The look of the film, they didn't make it seem like a wasteland because the setup of the film is 2033, a comic crash. There hasn't been rain for 11 years. And Malcolm McDowell is the boss of this company called Water and Power, which they control everything. If the Road Warrior people are looking for gas here, people are looking for water. If you have the water, you have the power. Hence, Water and Power. And Mr. McDowell is having fun with the role as a villain. Uh, he makes one of his men walk on broken glass. And then he's like, I wouldn't have done that. Why'd you do that? I wouldn't have done that. Pretty much called the guy a pussy. Uh, you should have stood up to me. And then the guy's being afraid. And then this contraption where he sticks in the people and it sets the water out of them. Now, Sally... You don't see much other than maybe a hand shrivel up. The fads are rated. I wish you could tell they were not planning an R rating. It just got that just because. I know Lord Pity, there was an interview where she said, Man, if I knew it was R rated, I would have done the whole movie naked. <laughs> but if they knew it would be already from the start. I think maybe you could have seen more of the person melting or getting the water sucked out of them. That could have been a good makeup effect. Since Stan Winston was a part of this project, and he liked the idea, and he helped create the kangaroo men suits, that would have been a cool effect to see more of a person, maybe similar to the ending of Indiana Jones' Last Crusade, when the guy chose poorly. And you see him kind of... <laughs> I melt away however you want to put his body decompose. But yeah, yeah, for an R rating, there's it's very tame. I think nowadays, if this exact same film came out, it would be a PG-13 easily. But the MP was a different animal back then. I mean, hard tardy on an R... It got an NC-17 rating, but if you see the footage, it's a soft R. I mean, you look at Rambo 4, and there's stuff in there ten times more gory than anything in Hard Target. So the MPA was just a very different animal at this time. And like I said, part of the charm is the way Laura Petty approaches the role. She's a lot of fun. I would say... She's kind of, for me, a more likable Harley Quinn compared to Marta Robbie and how she plays a role in these, in the Suicide Squad or Birds of Prey. I, was, I thought this was like a much more fun version of Birds of Prey in a weird way. It's just, she has fun with the role, she's tough, but she's not bitchy, and she fits the skin of this movie comfortably like she puts the movie on her shoulders and she's comfortable in the role and I think she helps carry the film at least for me whether it be early on when she's cosplaying with her boyfriend and she's like take off your clothes and then they're, they're fun kind of banter back and forth I said take off all your clothes whether it be when they knock her out and they have her tied up and, oh, you better stop hitting me. It's making me hot. <laughs> or she quickly breaks a guy's neck, and the other guys have guns on her, and she just looks and goes, what? <laughs> or how even after being tortured, she'll still have the guts to say, I win. It's a strong female character, but it's not... Oh, I gotta put every guy down in order to showcase that. No, it shows her determination, it shows her gutsy demeanor, it shows that she's eccentric and weird, and she is adored, she adores this tank, like a love at first sight, and 
she's the type that Naomi Watts, because as the story goes, Laura Pitty's at this place. There's this little girl who's her friend. The bad guys come in, take the little girl, kill her boyfriend, kill her animal that she rides the places, knock her out, want to break her will, put her in the mining facility as a worker with everybody else and there she beats one of the workers played by Naomi Watts nicknamed Jet Girl who works with water and power but she doesn't really believe in their ideals and she likes to fix the planes flying vehicles things of that nature and when this asshole is trying to fuck with her Laura Page just goes up and goes stop picking up my girlfriend and she kisses her and then makes it that the guy fucks off and then she thinks nothing of it that carefree nature that I didn't if you don't like Lori Petty maybe it won't appeal to you but it was appealing to me and it was again the backdrop and the environment some of the set design they have make it really feel like a wasteland some of the shots of the flying ships were decent effects word for what, the 20 some million dollar budget give or take I can't remember how much it would cost it, like I said, it has a goofy charm to it it was fun to watch in that instance do I have issues with the film yes again it, I wish they would have known to go R-rated from the start When the Rippers come in, when they have their mask on, I think they look really cool. I think they look intimidating. When they take the mask off, I think they made the wrong decision in the design. No disrespect to Stan Winston. May he rest in peace. Maybe what... I don't know if that was his decision or the director's decision. Rachel Talley. But the, the Rippers look ridiculous. I'm not saying it's bad effects, but it's just... It was a really shitty design. It looks goofy. It looks like the Warriors are Virtue or some shit. I think it's an issue where when you look at the comic book, their face looks more like kangaroo. It's just they happen to be five feet tall. Kind of like the Ninja Turtles. Think of the Ninja Turtles. Their faces look like a turtle. It's just they happen to be five feet tall and they can talk. But then when they did the Michael Bay produced movies in 2014, 2016, and they made them like have more of a snout nose and lips, and they try to make their faces look more human, it looks more creepy, it looks more disconcerting, it looks off. It just, to me, it becomes an uglier design. I think if you had them actually look like kangaroo heads but then they they talk have the voices of and have more of an like have a more of a straight you know, style like kangaroos also you may wonder why the fuck is a kangaroos well in the comic book it took place in Australia I don't think it takes place in Australia here and if they do they don't really mention it so maybe then people be confused well, why the fuck is Australia why kangaroos is it in for what I understand, the comic book took place in Australia, but they kind of don't really mention much of that. But yeah, I think making the human faces is... Well, we have to make people kind of know this is Ice-T, because this is his voice, and kind of look like him. It, it just makes him look uglier. It just makes him look more... I just don't care for the design. I think that was a big mistake. And it makes them look shitty. And I'm not saying it's shitty makeup, but it just the bad designs make it look shitty, at least to me. It's like, just please keep your mask on. You look better that way. And also you could tell that, like I said, Rachel Talley does not have the best handle on action. At best, she's passable as an action director. But there's not that big oomph, that big adrenaline rush and action set pieces that was needed for this kind of project. And the most punch, I would say, is there's a bit with animation. 
where they get the tank ready and they're driving the tank and they're both in the tank and then it cuts to now Jack Girl's in a flying vehicle and Tank Girl's driving the tank. I'm watching this, I'm going, I wish the whole movie was animated like this. And maybe in retrospect that would have been a better fit is to make the entire movie animation like this one sequence. Again, whether that would have been more successful, I don't know, but I think maybe that would have brought out a better product. Because with animation, you could have her look like the character, exactly like the comics. The Kane Roos, you could have them look like they are in the comics. You could be more free in action sequences and style and how they move and not have to deal with the laws of physics. and Because of the low budget, they couldn't do that. And you could tell there's stuff that was missing, that they weren't able to shoot. That's why there's moments where it'll cut to comic book panels. For example, the two, the Rippers come in, they're attacking these people. We don't even see Malcolm McDowell get attacked. So it wasn't until like a good chunk and go, oh shit, he was there. That's right, he was, but I thought he got away. Because it's been a while since I've seen the film. I'm like, oh no, he got attacked. He got, why did I shoot a scene where Malcolm McDowell turns and a Ripper comes at him or a Ripper throws him or he turns and a Ripper is ready to swipe him? They didn't even know until much after that, oh yeah, he was part of that attack and he got fucked up and so forth. Or there's a bit where they're in one sequence and all of a sudden they're in this place called Wet and Wild. I'm trying to remember that was the, the name of it. Yeah, Wet and Wild. I'm like, wait, when did they get from here to here? So, you tell there's stuff missing. And I know I'm saying a lot of negatives. Because I don't think it's a great movie. I don't think it's a fantastic movie. I do think it's a decent movie. Watch it again. I do think the first half before the Rippers got in there was more interesting. When it was just Taint Girl by herself. And then her and Jet Girl. I kind of wish the whole movie was just about them and just get rid of the Rippers and don't have them be a part of the movie. Because <coughs> I think Lori Petty and Naomi Watts worked fairly well together. The difference where Lori Petty's character is much more rambunctious, much more free spirit, but then Naomi Watts is much more of a shy character and then we see her blossom throughout because of the influence of Tank Girl's demeanor. I think just the two of them battling with water power, that could have been more fascinating. And like I said, with some of the missing stuff, like there's a quick montage, but you only see it from comic book panels where they did it, they did this taint, but then they make the taint alive. Because then the comic book, a comic book panel has a brain, and a brain is put into the taint. Where did that brain came from? Who is that brain? Does the tank actually have a mind of his own, or is it some kind of mechanized way she's able to control it? With that, seemed like something that could have been explained a lot more and could have been a lot interesting of what the deal is with this tank. The comic book panel that showed that a brain was put into it. Is that just was that literally? Was that figuratively? Was that metaphorically that a brain was put into it? Because the the tank. At times will have a mind of its own. And near the end, she's like, Are you out, you know Are you out of ammo? And the tank cannon turret would go like this or nod its head. That seemed like something that you could do a lot more with. Imagine Herbie the Love Bug was a fucking tank that could shoot your face out. But it seems like it's brought up and then nothing's really done of it. That's what I mean. That stuff would have been more interesting to me than the Ripper stuff. And Ice T, I know I thought the story was funny that when he got the call for this movie, he thought it was a stripper. When they said Ripper. Oh, I'm gonna be a stripper in a movie? Okay. Oh no, you don't be the Rippers. What's that? Is this kangaroo people? What? We don't pay you some say eight hundred thousand, some say a million. But it's like a million? Okay, I'll do it. 
and they didn't complain. And then someone said, how come you're not complaining? You know, you're in this hot suit? And he's like, it's better than jail. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. I mean, hell, if someone were to pay me a million dollars, I would do it. Fuck yeah. And, you know, the, the, there's some... Ice-T, you know, he's pretty much there to growl and bark some orders. Jeff Colbert... His character is kind of an infantile character as one of the Rippers. But he's, he talks and acts like he's 11 years old. Which is basically a bit weirder that, her, that him and Laura Petty get together. Not just the fact one's a tamed rude guy and one's a woman, but then the fact that he's so childlike mind. There's a bit of a weird thing about it. But they don't even, they don't go that far with it, because apparently there was more, and then that was cut out, the studio didn't want that, which, uh, part of me, I can't blame them, but the other part of me is like, well, did you know what you signed up for? Do you know what you agreed to when you greenlit? And there's a point where the characters meet this rain lady, that apparently she was in the film more, and she was the worst actress in the movie. Like, there's a bit where Lori Petty, like, gets this fish, hits her in the head, and it takes the woman like a full 30 seconds like oh that's how she acts oh that's how this this uh, rain lady acts did not doubt oh I'm like come on like don't take two don't take three really so yeah watch it again there's a lot of issues I have with it I know I've been saying more negative than positive so people go, well, what is it that you like about it? Again, Lori Petty's energy really carried the film. And the soundtrack fit the film. It was a definitely a soundtrack of its time. Some decent tunes in it. The, I said, the, the look of the film, the, the set design. Mucked him a dowel. I like the idea that they put some technology in him. Spoilers, where... He has a holographic head, so when Laura Petty tries to fight him, she can't hit him, because his head's holographic. Uh, I like the bits with her surfing the turret of the tank, and getting on this convoy, and fighting bad guys, and then the, getting on the tank again, goading the, the other bad guys to get the fuck out of the tank. I thought Lord Petty worked well with Mountain McDowell. Say I won. I won. No, no, say I won. I won. I won. <laughs> the way she's fucked with Mountain McDowell, that was easily the best part of the movie. So. I did, maybe because I'm just a Lori Petty fan, it was nice to see her get some. a lot, well, not a lot of room to breathe to be in a lead. It's not often she got to be the lead in a movie. Very, very rare. Some would say for good reason. To me, again, uh, I thought she was actually pretty decent. And again, it had a goofy charm. There was a bit of creativity involved with it and some fun to be had. I just, I do see that there's a lot of issues. Again, Richard Talley was not the best director. You need a better action director. The fact that they didn't have the money to shoot all the scenes, so sometimes the story kind of jumps sporadically from one place to another. The the Rippers with the mask on look really cool. Without it, they look really goofy with the noses and stuff and the cringe. Like one is a saxophone player, one is just horny and wants to hump them. One, Jeff Cobra's in Child I Bind. Ice T's is grumpy. <clears throat> this, I kind of wish the Ripper stuff wasn't in the movie at all, like I said. The finale, when the Rippers attack the, the compound, kind of them flying around, and. I did. You don't see a lot of blood or violence because it's R rated, but they didn't intend it that way. So it just kind of leaves a bit. Meh. Yeah. 
but overall I did like the film. It has enough of a goofy charm with Lori Petty and Malcolm Badal and Naomi Watts that it makes it at least seem unique compared to a lot of movies I've seen. I did like the Tank Girl character. I would like to have seen more of her in, in movies. Animated form or live action form. Just to deal with a better director and maybe a bit more. Okay, we're going to make you R rated from the start. And see a bit more of this world other than the stupid kangaroo people. So, it, there was a lot of room for improvement. Uh, I'll say that. But I didn't think it was nearly as bad as people made it out to be. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.